Hey everybody, welcome to Wow Mom Cooking. Today we're gonna to be doing a fall favorite, meatloaf, but a little twist on it, it's gonna be able to fit in your hand. We've got some sides to go along with it and a dessert, and all of this is gonna be less than $10 for the whole dinner. So grab your pens, your papers, and your aprons, and let's get cooking with Wow. Okay, we are going to start with the meatloaf. We're gonna put all this yummy stuff into the meatloaf. It's gonna be delicious. And then we're going to put the meatloaf into muffin tins. We're gonna do this because this way you can carry them around. You can have them in the fridge ready to go for your kids. It's great for a party. Anything you wanna do, it makes it easy to have individual servings and it's super simple to cook this way. Let's start with our main ingredient. I have just over two pounds of ground beef. Um, I always use the 80-20 when I'm doing something like this because you wanna have some of that fat because it adds to the flavor. So we definitely need that. We're gonna put that in here and we've got two eggs. So what I'm gonna do is put the um, eggs, the chopped onion already, and the, uh, this meat together, and we're gonna let it sit while we chop everything up and add it in here. So we've got our two eggs so that everything sticks together. There we go, crack them right in there. We're gonna get our already chopped up onions and drop those in. For those of you who noticed, my new handy dandy little dough scraper works great to pick things up off your cutting board. There we go. Now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna throw this stuff away, wash my hands, come back and chop everything else up because um, I don't wanna touch anything because I already touched the meat. So uh, we'll come back in just a second, do all of that, and I'm gonna show you all these yummy things we're gonna put in there to make this a delicious meatloaf. So I'll be back in just a second. Hands are all clean, everything else is clean. We're gonna start adding a few more ingredients to this so that we can mix it up and get that yummy meatloaf going. Um, we're gonna add some of this Good Seasons garlic and herb, but I only want half a package. I've already got half a package that I've used for another recipe, so I'm gonna use the other half in here. This makes a delicious salad dressing. It's also great on chicken. It's great to add some flavor to a meatloaf or anything else. We're gonna put some breadcrumbs in. I'm gonna put um, probably half a cup all together, um, and then I'm gonna set it aside to see if we need any more. We don't want it to be too dense, but we do need to have uh, some things in there that are gonna help stick it together and make it really delicious. I've also got some uh, French fried onions, which what we're gonna do with those, move this out of the way, I've got my fresh ground peppercorn and some sea salt in there. We're gonna smash some of these in here too, just for a little extra flavor. I don't want them to be as big and chunky as they come in, this, in the container, so that's why we're gonna use our mortar and pestle to smash them up and add everything in there together. See, it's real simple, just takes a second to smash them this way. Perfect. We'll go ahead and put this stuff in here too. We've got about a tablespoon of black, uh, fresh ground black peppercorns, and we've also got about um, a teaspoon of sea salt. Um, I use the coarse sea salt, so when I ground up the peppercorns, I ground the sea salt too, so that uh, it goes, uh, goes a little further. Now for our fresh herbs. My garden's not doing so good anymore. It's been really hot here in San Diego, excuse me, in San Diego, but I still have herbs growing and they are delicious. I've got some parsley here. We're gonna chop up and add to our wonderful meatloaf mixture. My tomatoes and everything else, pretty much done. Except my two little peppers. We're gonna put these in there too. Meatloaf is a great way to hide some vegetables if your kids won't eat vegetables. You can put all kinds of vegetables in there. You can put, uh, we're gonna add some tomato, so you could do fresh tomato or canned tomato. The bell peppers, definitely you can add in there. And you could add other things, whatever you think you can hide in there. Sometimes you gotta trick the kids to get them to eat their vegetables. Mine love their vegetables, so that's a good thing. So we're gonna do this uh, green bell pepper and this yellow bell pepper. Didn't have a lot of luck with my red ones this year. From the heat, they seem to dry out instead of uh, 
staying happy and turning colors and ending up in my food. So we're just about done with this. The other thing that's out of my garden is my green onions that I have here. These right here. They're growing strong. They seem to not have a problem with the heat. They seem to love it. So we're going to keep letting them love it. I'm going to use about half of this bunch here and just chop it up real fine. goes real quick when you do it. As long as your knife is sharp and you keep your fingers out of the way. There we go. Get that in there. And I am going to go ahead and put a little bit of rosemary in there just for flavor. I'm going to take it off the stem and then chop it just a little bit so we can release those flavors. It's probably only a quarter of a teaspoon altogether, but it does add a little something. And we definitely want to always have that wow factor, right? And a twig of fresh basil. Now my basil is growing great still also. When your basil starts to get a little viney, little turns a little brown, cut those little stems off, or if you start to get flowers, like this one has, chop them off and use them. The flowers are delicious, they smell great, and they're full of aroma and flavor. You could use them in your recipe like this, or you can put them in a drink. If you're having some kind of a, say like a basil lemonade or something like that, works perfect. So we've got all this in here. The last thing we need to do is add some garlic. I've got my little garlic press. We're going to put um, three cloves of garlic in here. Okay. We're going to mix this before we add in the tomatoes because what I want to do is have this all incorporated all throughout the hamburger and then we're going to add the tomatoes in just for a little bit of moisture. So we'll see how much moisture we still need. Now this you're going to want to use your hands for. So make sure your hands are clean. If you don't want to touch something like this, get a pair of gloves. Use some regular latex gloves that you might clean the house with, that are clean, that you haven't cleaned the house with, and use those to mix this up. You can see everything starts to get in there and gets together, and I'm telling you, this smells good already. I love the smell of fresh herbs. Okay. Now you can see the egg is starting to help stick all this together. You can see everything in there that is not, it's uh, just kind of mixing in and that's what we want because when you take a bite, you don't want to have a bite of nothing but hamburger and then another bite of nothing but your vegetables and your herbs. You want it to be incorporated through the whole thing. Okay, so what we're going to do next is I'm going to go wash my hands again. We're going to open that can of tomatoes and we're only going to use a little bit. We're pretty moist here with what we have and it looks pretty good, but we do need to have a little bit of tomato in here. So I'll be right back. I'm going to wash my hands and we'll move on. Okay, hands are all cleaned up and we're ready to add some tomato into here. I'm using some no salt added plum tomatoes. We're going to use two of them just so we get a little bit of that in there. Unless they were really small, then we'd probably want to use three and we'll see after we chop these up. The other thing I'm going to do is take my spoon and get a little bit of this juice out of here and put some of it into my mix. Just a couple spoonfuls. Okay, now we're going to chop these up so that they can get mixed in just like everything else. Okay, just a rough chop is fine, they don't have to be perfect. They have lots of juice you can see in them. Now I use the no salt added for two reasons. One, it's what I had, and two, we've already added salt in a couple of different ways and we don't want it to be too salty when, when we're done with this. So we're going to mix this up one more time. I'm going to grab a paper towel. So I can put my, put my bowl back over here. And then we're going to be ready to put this into our muffin tins. Now let me tell you about what I'm using. We're doing everything easy today. This is a disposable tin. And what I've put in here is jumbo muffin muffin cups and these are aluminum you can actually put those onto a cookie sheet if you want to and they will stand up on their own or you can use them in these muffin tins which will help hold them together we're going to do it that way this time so that you can see how easy it is so we're about ready to put some of these in here 
Now this recipe will probably make about 12 of these, so it's enough to feed four to six people easily. Or it's enough to take to a potluck. Halloween's coming up, and I know some people have open house, or they have, you know, just drop by, or they have a potluck. Great thing to take to it. So now that we're all mixed up, I'm gonna grab a handful. We're gonna make kind of like a big meatball. And what we're gonna do is put each one of these into our little tins, and then we're gonna bake them. So you'll see, fits in there just like that. It's beautiful, it's perfect. These are gonna cook up great. We're gonna put these in an oven at uh, 400 degrees and we're gonna keep an eye on them. So we're gonna make sure that they don't overcook. If they start to get too brown on top, you can just cover them with some foil. I'm gonna finish filling these and then we're gonna show you what's next. We're gonna move on to our potatoes. So here I go, I'm gonna finish these and then we'll be back to you, okay? on to the side dish. We're gonna make some cheesy, yummy ranch dill, all kinds of goodies in it, potato side. So we're gonna first put all of this stuff into our bowl. We have, um, it's about three quarters of a package of shredded potatoes. I put them in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes out of the freezer so that they would loosen up just a little bit. We don't want them to be completely frozen together because we're gonna mix things in with this. So we've got all of this. We're gonna put red onion, it's about half a cup. We're gonna end up mixing all this together, just like we did the meatloaf. This is about a cup of finely shredded cheese. You can put any kind of cheese you want. And we've got, again, about a half a cup of bacon bits. You can use um, bacon that you have at home and make your own, or if you have bacon bits in your cabinet, use those. Get all of this in here, and then I'll show you what the rest is. Okay, once we get it mixed up a little bit, we're gonna add half a cup of sour cream, and then for on the top of it is a freshly grated Parmesan cheese, make it a little extra yummy. We've got some Harvest Dill Hidden Valley Ranch dip. This is a great flavor. Kids love ranch, dill goes great with, with potatoes. It smells delicious. Again, we're only gonna use about half this package, so you can use the other half to make a dip if you'd like be good for a topping on these too. We're gonna use one egg to help everything stick together. And again, we're gonna get dirty, we're gonna use our hands, and it's gonna be great. So we're gonna mix all this up. Ooh, it smells really good already. I know I say that a lot, but it's true. So while I mix this, I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about me. For those of you that are new to the show, this is my kitchen in my house. I cook food that my family likes, and that my, fam my kids' friends will like too. You always have that kid that comes over and goes, oh, I don't know, or whatever. Kids never do that at my house. They come over, they wanna know if I'm cooking. They wanna know what we're making and what we're having for dinner. That's what I want you guys to be able to do. I don't do anything crazy. That's why I try to tell you guys everything on a really easy way to understand everything, to make it easier on everybody. This looks so good. I'm gonna add the sour cream in now. Yes, I'm gonna use my hand. This might be something that you want your kids to do with you too, as long as they wash their hands. Sour cream's gonna add a little bit of that texture to it too to keep, help it hold together just like the egg did, and it's gonna add a little bit of flavor. You can see it's starting to get really sticky now. You're gonna have to use both hands. And this again is gonna go into those, um, um, the muffin tins, the aluminum ones. They're great. You could do this any way. You could make this as a casserole, too. You could just put this in a big baking dish and bake it that way. I will warn you, it's cold. This is making my hands very cold. It smells really good. I know it's going to taste good. And what we're going to do is I'm going to wash my hands, get the baking dishes out, and show you how to put them in there. Kind of like the meatballs. So just hang on to your hats, and I'll be right back. Okay, we are going to put these into the tins now. Same thing we did with the meatballs. We're going to grab a handful and make potato balls instead of meatballs. And then we'll drop these in here. We wanna do all about the same size. Now these won't take as long to cook 
as the meatballs do. So we can go ahead and do these after the meatballs are already in the oven and drop them in the oven the same temperature and everything and everything should be done about the same time. So let's get these all in here. After I get these in here, we're gonna also put some Parmesan cheese on top of them. And that's just gonna add a little bit of flavor, a little bit of salt, a little bit of everything yummy and make these even better. So just got a couple more to go. Now most of this stuff I had in my kitchen already. Didn't have to go to the store for anything special. That's something I want you guys to be able to do with my recipes is grab things out of your cabinet, out of your refrigerator and put everything together. We eat these uh, hash browns a lot. So we have them and it's really great. They're really easy. And I always have some kind of, some kind of mix, whether it's the dill ranch or the um, Italian dressing mix, anything like that. You can add whatever you want. Make your own variation. Okay, last one. Ooh. Hands are gonna get cold again, definitely. So let me grab a paper towel. Clean my hands up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to sprinkle this Parmesan cheese on top of here, and then we're gonna drop these in the oven. I haven't washed my hands yet, so I'm not touching the cheese, because if we don't use it all, I wanna be able to save it. There we go. Those look perfect. They're ready to pop in the oven. They're gonna go in with the meatballs right now, and they should all be done about the same time. So we'll see you back in just a few minutes to get started on our dessert. Okay, we are making dessert. This is it. It's a stuffed caramel apple. It comes in a little package instead of on a stick, and it cooks to make it a little bit warm, and it is delicious. I'm gonna show you how. We start out with an apple. It's important that it lays flat. If you don't have an apple cutter, you really need one for this. So we're gonna center this over the stem. We're gonna go almost all the way down. There we go, just till the apple starts to spread apart a little bit. And we're gonna turn it over and push it back through. There we go. Just be patient and take your time. Wiggle it on out, there we go. You'll see the apple starts to come apart a little bit. We're gonna use our paring knife to take out this core. Wherever it's the loosest is where we're gonna work with that. So we're gonna hold on to the rest so it comes out nice. And we're gonna cut that core out because we're gonna stuff the inside of this apple. It's gonna be delicious. There we go. Now, we are going to take one of these little muffin tins, lay this in here. You can see it opens up just a little bit. We're gonna take a slice of butter, stick it right in the middle, and then a spoonful of brown sugar. This is gonna make a delicious sauce down there in the middle, and it's gonna be on the bottom of the, pan, the uh, little tin so that you can dip your apple in there as you go. Stuff it all in there, and you can see what's happening is the apple's opening up a little bit as I'm stuffing everything in here, and that's exactly what we want. Best invention ever for this time of year, anytime you need to use caramel. Caramel bits. They're unwrapped, little morsels of caramel deliciousness. You can see this is a little caramel bit. They melt fabulously. You don't have to unwrap a million pieces of caramel to do caramel apples or to add anything into your dish. We're gonna put these in there. We're gonna fill it all the way, push those down, and you can see now it's starting to open the apple just a little bit. And that's exactly what we want because now we're going to put a few of these little caramel bits in the openings. What it'll do is it'll cook in between, it'll melt the caramel in between here, and it's delicious. Gives us more caramel. There we go. And on this recipe, I'm using a regular muffin pan, not the disposable. Reason being is these are bigger and they need that support because they're heavier and we want it to sit in there and stay just like this. So here we go, last little topping. These are uh, pecan chips. You could use whole pecans. You can just smash up some pecans, whatever you want to do. And then I'm going to put a couple more pieces of caramel on top of that to keep those from burning. And 
Be generous with your caramel. It's delicious. Then we will take this, pop it into our pan. When we have it all filled up, we're gonna put all these in the oven at 300 degrees for about 25 minutes. That way they still stay a little bit crispy. Everything melts and gets ooey gooey delicious and they'll be ready to eat. Our meatloaf's almost done, our potatoes are almost done. Once these are done, I'll pull everything together and show you what our completed meal looks like. So I'll see you in just a bit. Okay everybody, dinner is ready. For under 10 bucks, we're feeding a family of four to six. We have 12 meatballs, we've got 12 servings of potatoes, we have some fabulous dessert. It's a stuffed baked caramel apple. We even took a little bit of that dill mix we had left and made some dip with sour cream for our potatoes. This is gonna be fabulous. I wish you could taste it because I can smell it and I'm ready to taste it. So I wanna tell you, thanks for hanging with Wow Mom again and until I see you next time, keep on cooking with Wow.